Let's get it. Mike Semper VV here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in iHeart, American Forces Radio, Cable Radio Network 2, SportsByline.com, over the air affiliates. Or maybe you're listening via podcast or video streaming on Twitch or YouTube. However you're joining us today, I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully, wherever you are, it's sunny outside. If not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. And of course it's sunny. It's a fun Friday. Not for all of you who have been pining to hear the dulcet tones of Brian Alvarez. He'll be back on the air for members of WrestlingObserver.com alongside Dave Meltzer early on Sunday morning for Wrestling Observer Radio. I'm going to try to fill the void the best that I can today. I've heard your complaints about Fun Friday. The phone lines aren't open. Brian's just complaining. I can't promise that I, I won't complain, but I will open up the phone lines in the last segment of the show so you can have some fun venting uh, or asking questions about anything that it is that you'd like. But I'll start off with a little bit of good news because earlier this week, Brian and I were talking about the foot injury that AJ Styles suffered last week on SmackDown. And thankfully for Styles, it's not as bad as it could have been. According to today's Wrestling Observer newsletter, Dave Meltzer reports that Styles suffered a midfoot ligament sprain in his match against Carmelo Hayes. Meltzer reports that Styles' leg went out on him while he was delivering a Ushigoroshi to Hayes, and the referee stopped the match. Meltzer also noted that Styles was to start a storyline where this would be his farewell tour or doing a retirement tease, and that's still the idea pending MRI results showing the severity of the injury. So not a torn ligament and not broken, which is good news. A lot more news to get into today as well. We got SmackDown and Rampage tonight. Tomorrow it's Wrestle Dream, and I got some odds for all you degenerate gamblers out there. AEW has filed a motion to dismiss the Kevin Kelly Tate Brothers lawsuit, Mercedes Monet in New Japan, and so much more. We'll get it started right after the break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi, Wrestling Observer Live. I know we're back on radio. Now we're back on video as well, too. It's going to be one of those kind of days. You know, we do this show right here every single day for an hour at a time. And if you want to try to find us 24-7, you can do so via Twitter slash X. I am at Sempervivi. The website is at WONF4W. And the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. Jim Valley is here with you on Saturday, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, although he will not be here with you tomorrow. And on Sundays, Andrew Zarian will be here. Don't worry, he will be here this Sunday, joining you at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Eastern time. I'd also love it if you made the wrestling news part of your day as well. You can find it wherever you find your favorite podcasts or head on over to the wrestlingnews.com and at Wrestling News AV on Facebook and X. Every single day of the year, everything you need to know to get your day started, get you up to date, or get you to your favorite long-form review pod like Wrestling Observer Radio. I'll tell you how you can become a member of the site a little later on in the show, but I want to go ahead and get this right out of the way. Because I said it in the intro to yesterday's show, and Tom and I were just talking about everything else but, and everybody gets all emotional about it, so here it goes. I'm going to give you the ratings for all of you who desperately need to hear them from this show in your life. Here it goes. Running on Tuesday night instead of Wednesday, due to Major League Baseball postseason play, AEW Dynamite averaged an audience. You, you guys ready? This is what you want, right? 329,000 with an 18 to 49 year old demographic rating of 0.10. That, according to Dave Meltzer in this week's newsletter, was, quote, far worse than expected. I saw that line and I went, well, what exactly were they expecting? And then Dave went on to write, quote, AEW had moved dynamite dates in the past, including last year on a Tuesday from 8 to 10 p.m., head to head with the biggest NXT show in its history. And they still did 609,000 and 8.26, end quote. That first hour of Dynamite, of course, went head-to-head -head with Hour 2 of NXT on the CW. And that second NXT show on the CW did 874,000 viewers on average, down from 895,000 for the premiere episode. The demo rating was a .24, also down from the previous week's demo rating of 
So there you go. There are your ratings for you. Move on now with WWE. And this is a little bit of good news for AEW because obviously that wasn't. So some good news for them. Their international media rights uh, are now uh, in play because WWE's international media rights have all gone to Netflix and they will do so when January begins. So because of that, there are opportunities for AEW to swoop in and take some of them. And they did just that on Wednesday as Fox Sports Mexico announced a, quote, new long-term agreement, end quote, with AEW that will cover Dynamite Collision and, for as long as it runs, Rampage. No terms or length of the deal were disclosed in the press release. The company's pay-per-views will also air on Fox Sports Premium, beginning with Saturday's Wrestle Dream in Tacoma, Washington, and the press release revealed that an all-elite show will air on Mondays, which appears to be a recap show. Fox Sports Mexico will broadcast the entire All Elite show in Spanish, produced with expert analysis and reviews of the week's matches, along with previews of the next AEW events. That was uh, from a translation that F4W did from the Wednesday press release. AEW programming previously aired throughout Mexico and some Latin American countries on Televisa Univision, but was quietly removed from the service earlier on this year. Sticking with Mexico for a moment, due to travel issues caused by Hurricane Milton, Timeless Tony Storm will not be making her Arena Mexico debut for CMLL tonight. Storm was scheduled for a match against La Catalina, but Storm's flight out of Florida was unsurprisingly canceled due to the hurricane and a new flight was not able to be secured. CMLL has issued a statement stressing that the match is still going to happen and will be announcing a new date in the next several days. In part, the statement read, quote, we are working hard with all parties involved to coordinate a new date that allows our fans to enjoy this long-awaited match. We regret any inconvenience this rescheduling may cause and appreciate your understanding and continued support. La Catalina will now wrestle in a tag team match on Fridays, meaning today's CMLL event, teaming with Samantha Black against Zeusis and Dark Silhouetta. Uh, recently, Storm, who is uh, apparently making a world tour here now that she is on a little hiatus after losing the AEW World Women's Championship to Mariah May. Uh, she was in Japan to work for Stardom for the first time since 2019, where she unsuccessfully challenged Mayu Iwatani for the New Japan IWGP Women's Championship. Sticking with New Japan for a moment. Their strong women's champion Mercedes Monet is among the wrestlers that have been confirmed for New Japan's Strong Style Evolve 2024 show, which is being held on December 15th at the Walter Pyramid, once again on the campus of Long Beach State University. In addition to Monet, New Japan is advertising that Tetsuya Naito, Gabe Kidd, Shingo Takagi, Zack Sabre Jr., Hiromu Takahashi, Tomohiro Ishii, Shota Umino, Kanosuke Takeshita, and Hesha Sero, among others, will be on the card. Tickets went on sale for that show today. Rhea Ripley, the latest WWE star to receive a new deal from TKO. PW Insider first reported this on Thursday, that Ripley, who turns 29 today, happy birthday, Rhea Ripley, and WWE have come to terms on what is said to be a five-year contract with the deal just needing to be signed. It comes with a, quote, considerable raise, end quote, according to PW Insider. Ripley and Damian Priest are currently feuding with their former Judgment Day teammates. Hard to believe that she will not put pen to paper relatively quickly here. Uh, certainly, I still think that at some point down the line here, not going to be this year because obviously we got a whole lot with the bloodline and the rock and all that stuff going on. Bianca Belair and, and uh, Rhea Ripley still, to me, feels like it could be built into a WrestleMania main event on one of the nights. At some point, I really, truly believe that's going to happen. We'll see. SmackDown, of course, is tonight live. I almost said on uh, Fox, but on USA uh, bon Secours Wellness Arena in Greenville, South Carolina. We have two matches announced thus far. One of those matches was made on NXT this past Tuesday night. Jakara Jackson and Lash Legend 
will be battling Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill for the WWE Women's Tag Team title, and LA Knight will defend the United States Championship against Carmelo Hayes. AEW Rampage, also tonight on TNT. The show was taped after Dynamite on Wednesday night at Spokane Arena in Spokane, Washington, which, as you will all remember, Brian Alvarez was not going to and nobody else would. Nobody's going over that mountain. Apparently, the people that were there living in the greater Spokane area didn't come out for the show either, of course, but here's your no-spoilers preview. Brian Keith against Rocky Romero in a match that you may have seen on Dynamite when the learning tree rolled up on Rocky Romero in the back. So Brian Keith knocked off Rocky there. Lance Archer debuts under the management of Don Callis as he faces Matt Brannigan. The Beast Mortos against The Butcher. Chris Statlander against Amira. And Kyle O'Reilly and Orange Cassidy will face off against Matt Taven and Mike Bennett in what I believe will be the opening match of the show. So that is what's lined up for tonight. Obviously, coming up tomorrow is AEW Wrestle Dream. And a little bit earlier on, I, uh, I, I found these. I forget who they were from, but the, they come from betonline.com, the odds. And we'll go over more of these a little bit later on in the show. But not only can you bet on the matches, yes, there are prop bets as well. Will Christian cash in his title shot? Plus 500 for a yes. Will Brian Danielson retire on this show? Plus 700. And who will appear first on this show? Bobby Lashley is the odds-on favorite at minus 250. And then comes MJF at plus 200. Adam Cole at plus 550. And the long shot, Ricky Starks, plus 1800. Probably should be a little bit higher than that. A lot more we need to get into, and we shall do so after the break. Wrestling Observer Live. Hello, Mike Sempervivi here with your Wrestling Observer Live. And, uh, you know, we got our first caller of the day. Mystery guest, will you sign in, please? Hey, Mike. What's going on? This is longtime listener, filthy Tom Waller, sometimes caller. I'm here. Oh, now I'm on video and I got to stop making that face. Yes, you do. You open up the airwaves and what kind of garbage sneaks in here on a Friday, but it's me, Mike. I'm back in action, baby. I was listening. I was reading, lurking in the chat. I saw the big boss man was stuck down in the cell in Cobb County, Georgia, or wherever he is, and I got the hot tag, baby. I have no idea where that man is. Not a clue. He's your tag team partner. Aren't you supposed to take better care of him? Remind him that he's supposed to work on Fridays. It's fun Friday. He's supposed to be here. Yeah, believe me, I'd love to take care of him sometimes. But I'm here to take care of you for the next 35 minutes, buddy. We won't need that long, Tom. And I'll go ahead and transition very awkwardly into this story right here. Legal legal representation for AEW and Ian Riccoboni have filed a motion to dismiss the lawsuit of Kevin Kelly and the Tate brothers and are asking that the arbitration clauses in their contracts be enforced. According to a story posted earlier on today by John Pollock of Post Wrestling, the Jackson Lewis Law Firm, which is representing AEW and Riccoboni, issued a 40-page response on behalf of their clients. I have not gone through this. I just checked on Twitter a little bit ago. Brandon Thurston is dutifully going through everything. So, uh, you know, just follow his Twitter and, and at WrestleNomics, and he'll let you know what's going on with any updates that he finds in there. But... The suit was filed in the state of Pennsylvania in August and alleges, among other things, breach of contract, tortious interference with a contract or business relationship, and defamation. The defendants are requesting that the plaintiff's claims be dismissed due to an improper venue and to enforce their AEW contracts, which call for arbitration. The alternative to arbitration, according to the defendants, would see the case tried in the United States District Court for the Middle District of Florida, Jacksonville Division. It also argues that only two members of the case, 
Kevin Kelly and Ian Riccoboni are residents of Pennsylvania and that the case should be tried in Florida where AEW is based and where the contracts were executed. They also argue that the plaintiffs agreed to resolve all disputes in Duval County where the city of Jacksonville is located and that their contracts state that disputes would be resolved in arbitration privately. Tom, I know you've watched a lot of Judge Judy, a lot of people's court, maybe maybe even some paternity court, uh, possibly. But what do you think of any of this with all of your legal knowledge? Well, I, I believe that the case should be moved back to Duval County, to Jacksonville, where the contracts were executed. Uh, Ian Riccoboni's home place should have no bearing on where this trial takes place and you know as somebody who's worked with both ian and kevin i like both of these guys but they are on opposite ends of whatever world whatever spectrum you can find and they are seemingly willing to i don't know i guess battle each other in public court to uh, get all of this handled. I don't, like, I looked at some of the stuff from the lawsuit, and one of the things that they're trying to push forward is the idea that the wrestlers for AEW are independent contractors. And, like, out of all the companies in pro wrestling, AEW allows their talent to do outside dates. You know, so I think that... It, when you're looking at it in the grand scheme of things, like those wrestlers there have the best of both worlds in a lot of ways where WWE talent does not have that uh, same, you know, they don't have that same luxury. So I don't know that that is going to, you know, I don't think that one's going to fly, honestly. Apparently that was one thing that uh, Brandon Thurston noted was at all times material here too. Plaintiffs and all punitive class members were properly classified as independent contractors. You know, it's such a, and again, I don't, I'm obviously not a lawyer and I have not been involved in too many legal cases in my life. So, you know, how they can mix mash so many things because there are obviously contract issues from both guys that are saying, hey, you know, this should be this way. There's defamation, you know, that both are saying, you know, seemingly sides. Kevin Kelly is well, saying, you know, obviously with what Ian Riccoboni said, the Tate brothers are bringing up what Tony Khan said at the press conference after saying that they were, you know, released, that, hey, they had missed a bunch of dates. So there's beef there. But then you have that aspect of, and these people are not independent contractors. They should be classified as employees. I mean... I don't know. I don't know how those things exactly mesh no. and, you know. It's a multi-pronged attack, but I'm not sure that any of these attacks are connected. You know, I don't know what... <laughs> I mean, I guess if you want to say AEW itself is out there defaming the character of people like Kevin Kelly and the Tate Twins, then you could go after them. But those are two completely separate issues, as is the one about the independent contractor status. So, Well, and they're going to have a hell of a time proving the defamation. I mean, that's one of the things that was brought up was, you know, as a public figure, you know, did was he truly defamed by this? And, and Kevin, I believe, is saying that he was. There's an issue over a New Japan date that I believe oh. he feels as though was blocked uh, by AEW and him not being allowed to do that show? I mean, surely his character has taken a hit in this entire thing. You know, Kevin Kelly at one time was kind of one of the more beloved announcers that you'd come across because of his work that he was doing in New Japan at really kind of the height of New Japan's popularity, uh, you know, worldwide in, in the 2000s. So I think a lot of people looked favorably upon him. And now if you look at the public sentiment around Kevin Kelly, you know, it's kind of switched a little bit. And it certainly has to do with how this entire situation was handled. It sucks. You know, it's, it's just a, it's a tough situation because just like you, 
I like both guys a lot. I've known Kevin Kelly for a long time. I don't agree with a lot of Kevin, you know, some of, of his things, but you know, I don't think it's anything that I would ball somebody up and throw them in the trash for either, to, to be honest with you. And same goes with, with Ian, you know, certainly in the world, you know, you're going to disagree with people, but both are, I believe, very good at their jobs. And I'm, I'm you know, it's upsetting for, you know, because of both of them in the situation that they're in. Um, we'll I will to... say, I will say, I don't think Ian should have been wearing that cowboy hat, but hey, that's on think... me. I don't, I don't think you should wear the cowboy hat either, but you know, and that's, the, <laughs> you know, now you're going to get us into this stuff. I don't want anything to do with any of this stuff. I hope it, it ends up working itself out as best as possible for everybody involved. And I'm just happy I'm not involved directly in any of it here. One thing I wouldn't mind being involved in, Tom, and I don't know about you. I don't know how you're you're looking as far as your passport goes in anything, but every time there's an announcement for Scott Demore's new Maple Leaf Wrestling Group, like, I get a little bit more excited. Now, granted, there's a zillion indies out there. There's a lot of great wrestling out there. Knowing what I know about Scott Demore, this promotion is going to be one of those that kind of slides to the top of the list here pretty fast, and the people he keeps putting on these shows makes it feel like that's, you know, exactly their goal is to make sure that they're up there alongside the GCWs and the, you know, those American companies that are at the top of the food chain when it comes to indies. But the company announced today that they have their first opening match of their two-night weekend. Josh Alexander, Stu Grayson, and El Fantasmo take on Rocky Romero, Alex Zane, and Trevor Lee. That's going to be the opening match for the Forged in Excellence weekend. The promotion is launching with two events from St. Clair College in Windsor, Ontario, Canada on Saturday, October 19th and Sunday the 20th. Both share shows will air live on, as pay-per-views on Triller TV. The promotion is a basically a revival of the Maple Leaf wrestling brand that existed from the 1930s into the 1980s, run by Frank Tunney for years, and then Jack Tunney, who, of course, became the figurehead president in the WWF after that. DeMore left TNA earlier this year after being asked to because he was fired. So he didn't, didn't really have much of a choice in sticking around. But Mauro Ranello and Don Callis will be the commentary team for both shows. And we've already got Konosuke Takeshita against Josh Alexander on night two, as well as Konosuke Takeshita against Speedball Mike Bailey on night one. You got any interest in, in hanging out in Toronto one time, maybe slapping around a couple of people? It sounds like it's going to be a great promotion. I mean, what do you want? Star-studded first match, star-studded two nights back-to-back. -back. And like you said, Maple Leaf Pro Wrestling is probably going to be one of the best independent companies sooner rather than later. 1-800-878-PLAY. 1-800-878-7529. Call Filthy and I, Wrestling Observer Live. The show, Mike Sempervivi here with you alongside Filthy Tom Lawler. It is Fun Friday here on Wrestling Observer Live. I almost said .com. Wrestling Observer Live. 1-800-878-PLAY. 1-800-878-7529. And because they always told me to do this three times, 1-800-878-7529. That's the number that you can call into to talk to myself and Filthy Tom Lawler. Do you want to vent about something? Now is your time. Do you got questions about something? Now is your time. Do it. It's Fun Friday. Make it good. And we're going to start with Alex in Seattle. Alex, how are you? Can you hear me? I can. Sort of. All right, all right. How's it going, guys? Fun Friday, you know what I mean? Damn right. Damn right. Uh, so, let's see. Let's see. Uh, well, I'll be at the Wrestle Dream. So, there's that. Uh since it's in Tacoma. Uh, if it was Spokane, though, I uh, wouldn't be able to make it too far, you know? Not not going over that mountain? Uh, I, no, I wouldn't be able to. It's tough. All right, what are you, what are you but, looking uh, forward to the most on Wrestle Dream there? All right, well, I think there's a lot of good uh, matches and whatnot. It's going to be fun all over the card, up and down. Uh, I think Daniel and got to lose, bro. He got to lose, lose, bro. It's time. I just feel like he's, uh, 
he he he's got this thing going kind of kind of weird lately, bro. That's all I'm gonna say. Now, are I you think... good with this? Are you good with the Moxley? Because if Moxley wins the title, we're gonna get a lot more of whatever this new group we got going on here. How do you feel about this new group that Moxley's got started right now? Hmm. It's it's. I, I mean, it's not quite new, right? I just think there's a few pieces to it, even though it's technically the BCC, but maybe that name is done. Uh, I don't know. I think, I don't know. I think it was weird what happened with Darby, though, too, that he had his shot and then gave it up. Hopefully he gets it back somehow. But I don't know. I think there's some people coming back, too, that could break the... the the world title picture would be interesting too as well. Um, I don't know. I just think it, because I, I feel like uh, people talk about the success and the or like the ups and downs of the company based on like who's the champion and stuff. And it, I don't know. A lot of the stuff seems like it's down or the numbers or whatever. You know, people talk about that stuff a lot too, but. I don't know. Danielson is the one at the top, so it seems like it's just weird with Danielson lately. I don't know. I just don't like the way how he uh, like uh, story and booking and setting up the matches. And I don't know if it's all his fault though, but it just seems all kind of like thrown together and stuff. Like it's hard to get into really. I mean, it's fun and stuff to watch, but I don't know. Yeah, to no, me, no you know, one of the things. Investment. Yeah, one of the things to me, it seems like almost as if there was this arbitrary deadline that needed to be met to get Danielson out of there, and all of this stuff got crammed in. All of it was done to fit to that deadline. When, you know, we talked about Daniel Garcia not being used the most effectively that he could, and this is another instance. I don't think that this retirement storyline, the way it was done with Daniel Bryan, was done as effectively as it could have been done. Hey, Alex, I want yeah. to thank you very much for the call, my man. I've got to move on here. I appreciate you listening in. I appreciate you calling in on Fun Friday. Have fun at the show. All right, all right. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you, my man. Going to keep moving on here. Going to move on to Don. Don, how are you? Hey, 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 Mike, it's Don the Don Rosberger. How you doing? Not too bad. Now, Don, now, our, wait, Filthy's got a question for you right off the bat here. Yeah, Don. Okay. okay. Don, yes. the, Don the Ross Rosberger, whatever your name is. You no, said Don the Don. Okay, sorry. Ron the Don. So th you're coming from Southwest Virginia. Now, is that Southwest Virginia or is it Southwest Virginia? It's Southwest Virginia. Like, uh, gotcha. it's in Virginia, but it's the Southwest part. Uh, I'm actually, uh, I'm south of West Virginia, but I'm on the west part of Virginia, and so I just call it Southwest Virginia. Some people might say Southwestern Virginia, and that might, uh, I could have done that and, you know, had that question off at the pass, but, you know, I, that's not my style. Yeah, keep the people guessing, right? Exactly, exactly. Now, Don, 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 the wait, Don before them, you yeah. begin, before you begin, Don, I heard okay. that there are some killer strip clubs in West Virginia. Some some little birdie told me that during the break. There are some killer spots. Have you ever traipsed over the border to go get yourself some action at a West Virginia strip club? Well, yeah, you head up 460 right into Princeton. And uh, the, I forget the name of the place, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good place. It's a, it's a great place. Nice. What you got going on for the show today? Anyways, I, yeah, you know, I figure it's Fun Friday. And uh, I, 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 you know, I'm going to fantasy book here because that's, that's what all us nerds here on the Internet and the, the radio and all of us do, you know. Well, it's, uh, either that, it's either that or you sneak into an event and take some pictures of people's feet. Those are your two options. Well, well yeah, that, that too, that too. But uh, here, here, here's, here's what I think should go, what I should think should go down. Uh, if Brian Danielson wants to keep this thing going, he needs to bring in John Moxley's kryptonite. And look, TK is scared of this. John Moxley probably has it in a contract that no, you can't do this. But seriously, it is time. Toru Yanu, Toru Yano. 
it, it, needs to be brought out. He needs to show up with his red chair and his DVDs and uh, and, and and Moxley. Moxley is just—he's done. He's done. Uh, who yeah. who needs to show up? Toru Yano. Oh, okay. Does he does he also practice sumu and judo? Or is that Perhaps. Toru? You, you know, Don, don't let him do that to you. Fire back. Yeah, Look, long, I'm a 30 plus year radio veteran over here, and uh, you know I'm not always talking about Toro Yano, Toru Yano, <laughs> Yano Toru. You, <laughs> you can't, you can't claim to be a veteran you because you've been listening to the radio for 30 years. Well, you know, <laughs> Don, Don, anything else? <laughs> nah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I just, just, just trying to make it fun. Hey, man, Brian I appreciate it. In, so I, I figured I'd show up and make it fun. <laughs> I appreciate it. You're doing it a good very, job. So. Very, very much. Hey, you know, I've been doing radio for a long time, and uh, I'm certainly not a professional. That That's for damn sure. I think we all know that. I think just one listen to this show lets you know that. But, Don, thank you very much for calling in. Filthy, there are odds for this show, right? There are yeah, we're on it. <laughs> there are betonline.com on the airwaves for this show. John Moxley minus 150, Brian Danielson plus 120. And as I read these odds to everybody here, folks, if you want to bet on John Moxley, if you put up a hundred dollars, you will win 50 back. That's what you'll walk away from. If you put $100 on Brian Danielson, you will win twenty dollars. Basically, that's how that goes. That's how when you read what? the lines, you got to put up. You put up a hundred bucks on Brian Danielson, you're winning one hundred and twenty, which means you're taking home twenty bucks. John Moxley, if you put a hundred dollars on him, you're going to get back fifty, and and that's how that goes. Okay, and you walk away with one hundred and fifty bucks if he wins. That's how these odds work when they're in this forum. I know everywhere around the world they got their own way of doing odds and. You know, How much are you going to win if Daniel Bryan wins? He's the – plus is the underdog. The underdog. Yeah. You just said he's going to win – you're going to win 20 bucks if you bet 100. Yeah, you got to put $100 up to win 20 in that exchange. And then by your scenario, if you also put up 100 bucks, you get 50 back from John Moxley, so you'd make more money? <laughs> go ahead. You go ahead and do this here. Hey, I didn't. I'm not talking about betting odds for professional wrestling. <laughs> I didn't bring it up because I don't understand it either. I don't understand how you can bet on it. I don't understand the how much money you win. I don't understand All I know why is that anybody every, bets on it. Every time I ever bet on anything, I lose. I lose, I lose, I lose. Glover Texera. <laughs> bet on him to beat Jiri Prohaska. Beats him up for four rounds and four minutes and 30 seconds of the fifth round and then gets submitted which hasn't happened to him in years <laughs> and that was anyway, it for me i butchered that look john moxley you put up you got to put up 150 bucks to win 100 there 100. If you put 100 up on brian danielson you win 120 but small odds there you know it's relatively close where it seems like john moxley is the heavy favorite for that match Put that in comparison to Jack Perry being a minus twenty five hundred favorite over Shibata, who's plus eight hundred. So, well, I think those odds are about correct. But you talked earlier about odds of something else, and that was Christian cashing in his briefcase plus five hundred. Right? Yes. So maybe that's why those odds on Moxley and Brian are so close because you still have this scenario where maybe. Brian defeats Moxley, but then dastardly Christian comes in and beats him and sends him packing anyways. Can you imagine a two T's parlay where you actually think Christian's going to cash in at plus 500 and Brian Danielson is going to retire at plus 700? I wonder what they give you for that one. But uh, some of the, the odds, the Young Bucks, I think, are going to defeat Private Party they're minus 2,000 private parties, plus 700. The one, I guess, upset if you're looking to throw some money down and make some money in the hopes that something happens during this match, Mariah May, 
minus 5,000. Willow Nightingale is plus 200. So that is by far the biggest uh, range of odds there. Wow. Jay White is the favorite against Hangman Adam Page. And again, there's no... There's no odds here that were listed for no decisions or no finish or anything like that. But Jay White minus 180, Hangman Adam Page plus 140, which kind of surprised me, as well as Darby Allen being such a big favorite, minus 1,500, whereas Brody King is plus 600 there. I mean, I think there's a good shot that Brody in the House of Black, as we talked about yesterday, could beat up Darby Allen, leave him laying. But I guess uh, as far as, you know, the Vegas odds or whoever's putting these out there go, you know, they think that, okay, Allen's going to get the victory. Yeah, I'm actually surprised by some of those odds that you threw out there. Uh, I would have thought that Brody King and Darby Allen would be a much closer call than is uh, was made by the the bookers out there. Do you have the odds for the big boxing match tomorrow, the Bivol fight? No, you know I meant to actually <laughs> meant to actually do that earlier for my own purposes that I uh, will not talk about on this show. But uh, no, we'll, we'll find those during the break though, and we'll, we can break those out as well too. In fact, that's the only that is the only ring sport really with anything going on this weekend boxing uh everything else seems to be professional wrestling this weekend there's no ufcs are there any other than the grappling contests are there any actual little fisticuffs uh mma wise that we got to look out for there's a bare knuckle fighting championship you love tomorrow that. take a place in the morning right after the bivol fight actually where uh ben davis will fight a member of conor mcgregor the media member We'll fight another member of uh, Conor McGregor's video log team, I believe. That's on the undercard. Uh, but I believe the middleweight... There's there's three title fights of that BKFC tomorrow. But yeah, that's about it. Pretty slow weekend for all combat sports here. Evil minus 125. Peter Biev, plus 110. So relatively close there. I think we're going to throw some money on Bivol. We'll be back, Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Semper, me, Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it was a fun Friday. Going to put a GPS on Brian. We'll find out where exactly he is at. I know, I know he's going to be with Dave Meltzer early Sunday morning, late Saturday night. No, it'll be early Sunday morning by the time the AEW press conference is all wrapped up from Wrestle Dream, and uh, they'll be back on the air for all of you guys. Fourteen ninety nine gets you everything the site has to offer. You can go to WrestlingObserver.com. Check all that out, too. If you just want the podcast through Spotify and iTunes, you can do that for nine ninety nine. If you only want video live and on demand through YouTube for a bunch of the shows, you can do that, nine ninety nine as well. So... I'd like you to do fourteen ninety nine though. That way you get all of the access to all of the shows, including all of those Adam and Mike Big Audio Nightmares from over the years and all those other great shows that the site puts out there. But Tom, as we've reached the end here, I appreciate you uh saving the day the last two days for the boss man. I do. I know you do, Mike. That's why I'm here. I enjoy I enjoy getting that hot tag from you from somebody that actually appreciates the work that I put in, the hard, diligent, you know, just I, I can't even express the amount of time and effort that goes in to analyzing professional wrestling that I do on a daily basis. So it's always good to have somebody respect that, especially a, a journalist, respected journalist like yourself, who I actually used to read articles from and then would listen to in my own free time so you know it might have been uh just a normal friday for a lot of people but for me not only was it fun mike but it was fantastic we shall talk to you all again after a while